Hello guys, we are actually uh, computer engineers at Florida International University and this video is meant for a class which is called Embedded Operating System, uh, EEL 4734 and our professor is Alexander Pons. Hi guys, my name is Daniel Hernandez. Hi guys, my name is Rolando Gonzalez. Hey guys, my name is Octavio Anzola and we're computer engineers from Florida International University. Alright guys, I'm going to be talking today about what are the most innovative embedded application systems. And I believe one of those would be wearables. Now, the foundation of wearables started out in the 1880s with a mechanical wristwatch. It was established then. Um, moving on, fast forward 90 years, you have the quartz watches revolutionizing the industry. Uh, those would be the more, those with the little digital times. And fast forward 20 years, you have experimentation with the first smartwatches, which weren't released or commercialized. Fast forward 10 years, you have the smartwatches started starting to sell. You have Fitbit, you have Google Glass, you have Nike Fuel Band. Right now, the very latest is going to be the Apple Watch that it is so sought after, creating new business opportunities for Apple and Samsung. Now, one of my favorite wearables which I actually purchased was uh, Jawbone Up. The reason why I purchased it is I wanted to see what kind of benefits this device would bring me and it said it, it would track my sleep and it would tell me how well I slept and it would track my steps every day so it, it, it helped me track my my health and my fitness um, once I purchased it I noticed other other features that it had that were sort of beneficial one of them was that I could set the the, the wrist band to tell me um, if I haven't moved in 15 minutes or 30 minutes it would vibrate and it would tell me hey you're being a couch potato um, otherwise um, if, if you don't like that feature, you didn't have to use it, but it, it, was, it was beneficial because you want to keep moving around the day to keep your day going and keep yourself active. Another feature that it had is that it would tell you when it was your bedtime and it would vibrate. You could, you could set all this up by connecting it to your iPhone or Android device via the earphone piece and you could track yourself and upload your information to your phone and, and check all your sleeping schedules and stuff like that. Now, the benefits of having sleeping schedules is that you're able to tell how long you're going to last throughout the day being active and being 100% there without needing a coffee break or stuff like that. So, um, having all these benefits really, really shows um, things that we now have that we didn't have uh, years before. Um, we're able to track our fitness, we're able to track our sleep, we're able to track um, how well we're going to perform during the day, and we're going to have much more information that we didn't have earlier days. So I'm going to be talking about the most useful embedded systems. So now, nowadays we depend on technology. Everything we do has to deal with technology. We have phones, we have tablets, we have computers, we have dig digital cameras, we have TV, radios. So now, how is it that we make that transition? Well, since the beginning of technology, we've been trying to make everything easier for a human being. So now we have iPhones, we have smartphones. What is a smartphone? It's an embedded system that we use before we use it only to what? To um, call, right? To make calls, to send texts. Now we use it to search on the internet, to take pictures, to take videos. We have social media that we can connect to our phone and we talk to our friends. So now that is an example of one of the most useful embedded systems we use. Now what else? Well, we have computers, we have tablets, we have um, smart watches. But now what else do we have? Well, in another type of environment we have air trafficking. So for air trafficking we had lots of improvement. Because before, since the era of the airplanes, we didn't have an easy way to see, to see or, to, or to try to manage where the airplane was. So there was an improvement there with the computers, with the radars, and all that. Also we have, in banking, we have ATMs. So why do we need an ATM? Automated well, teller machine. Yes, an automated teller machine that we actually need for what? To 
see our statement to um, deposit money, cash to withdraw money. money. Yeah, cash or checks, right? So we can do cash or checks. What else do we need the ATM? Because we don't need a person to be standing there and do the transaction for us. We just have it outside the bank. We can do it at night, at 3 a.m. It doesn't matter. And we have our bank account with us. In our house, we have microwaves, we have dishwashers, we have TVs. All of that is an example of an embedded system that we use every day. So the last example I'm going to give is digital cameras. For me, that is one of the most useful embedded systems that we have today. Before, we have what it was called film photography. So in film, we had to use only 36 frames. We didn't have a way, we have to finish for the development, then we have to print it, then send it to the editor, and then it will come out on the magazine. So now we don't actually need it. Now we have digital cameras that have Wi-Fi built in. Now you can get your digital camera, take a picture, upload it to your editor's website, and then it's already on Facebook, it's already on the internet, Google, whatever. So digital cameras have actually changed the world. So marketing and journalism have changed thanks to digital photography. If we think about it, computers are present in every aspect of our lives. Look around. Everywhere we see computers, everywhere we see cell phones, perhaps in every, in every room we see smart boards, we see projectors, everything is embedded. And pretty much 98% of all the electronic equipment are using embedded systems. Now, if we go back in time, where the computers, the first, very first computers were very large, that occupied an entire room, and actually were programmed by punch cards. Those were big and unuseful because they were not capable of doing what an Intel processor is, do, is capable of doing today. Those big computers, as, 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 we, as we progress in times, using, uh, for example, uh, any dials and using all the built-in circuits that are in those chips are getting smaller by time because as we are humans, we try to make it easier for ourselves. And nowadays, smaller is better. Because if we think about it, for example, the cell phones. Back in time, there were those big cell phones that they looked like a block. But nowadays, we can see just any smartphone. For example, we can see the iPhone 6. It's very thin, it's, very, it's a little bit large, but it performs a lot of applications that we were not able to not even think about back then. For example, as Daniel said, we can go and surf online, look up everything we want to. Because those embedded systems that is built in inside those cell phones are very useful. And also, another application that we see for embedded, uh, embedded systems, when we took the first man to the moon. I believe it was in 1969 when Armstrong touched the moon for the first time. And I believe he said, And this will be one small step for a man, but one big step for humankind. And that is the main concept of embedded operating systems. We try to make it easier for us. We try to make it better, to perform in a way that we no longer have to put so much effort into it. All right, guys, thank you for listening to our presentation and wish us luck in our finals. Hallelujah. <laughs>